All right, welcome back. And uh, this is the tutorial for Atlas Madness Returns 90%. This time it'll be all about chapter three. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing to know is at the start of chapter three, there's gonna be a fade after the cutscene. You wanna be holding up left during that fade. Uh, I, it didn't show it because I've already watched that cutscene uh, on this file, but there would be a fade to w from white into the scene. So if you just hold up left, you can get to about here before that fade ends. Uh, be careful about the hitboxes there. They're pretty huge. There's not a ton of extra room uh, between that fence and the light post. And after this cutscene, just hold straight forward to get through the door. Um, there's going to be a cutscene here, uh, in this room. You want to hold back, but be ready, because the camera's going to flick around Alice. Uh, so once it does, you want to, you know, swap to holding forward to get through the door. Did I rip his head off? Perhaps I'm fated to expire right here. Alright. And now there's not a lot to say for the rest of this, uh, London section. You kind of just run to the end. There is a skip you can do at in the first fight of this area. You only get one shot at it, and it's very, very difficult. So I will try it, but I'm not expecting to get it. And that's kind of, like... I, w I wouldn't plan to do this skip, basically, because it's very, very, very difficult. You have to jump off of the top of an enemy to the next area. So basically, here, you want to jump. Yeah, not even close. It is p possible to make the jump from the menacing ruin up onto that um, next platform. So instead, like I said, just don't expect to get that trick and just go ahead and do the fight normally. Um, during this cutscene, you want to hold down left and then kind of switch around to holding up left to get all the way to that platform before uh, it starts going up. Um, in this area, there's two things you can do. The safer thing is just to kill these enemies and use the thing, the Tuka thing. But if you want to try for it, you can make this jump without raising the platform. And that'll look something like this, if I get it. Yeah, I'm not super great at this jump. Um, I'll try it a couple more times, but it it is actually pretty difficult because you need to put yourself in the right position with the with enough height, which is not easy to do. There we go. And then from there, you're able to go to here. But for the most part, I would say that that trick isn't worth it. Um, and you should just do the fight normally. And then you can just jump right onto this rock. And then from here, you can do the same thing. 
And now we get up to the teapot, and this is where combat starts being a little bit more interesting. Because the teapot is definitely the most powerful weapon in the game. So, one thing you can do is you can actually cancel uh, out of the lockout from shooting the teapot again. And you do that just by switching to the um, switching to the pepper grinder and switching back to the teapot, and then you'll be able to shoot immediately. I don't do that in this fight for a couple of reasons. One is that the lock on doesn't change fast enough to really deal with the mul the multiple enemies, and the second reason is for the colossal ruin. The heads actually have a small period of vulnerability to the teapot after you hit it once. So, uh, if you just, if you do the canceling and you mash through it as fast as possible, you're not doing nearly as much damage as you could be doing. Um, the second thing that I'm going to mention is that I took damage there, like I took a hit from the Colossal Ruin that's entirely on purpose. In this area, you want to get your health low enough that you can easily get to uh, Hysteria for a fight coming up. So, uh, I'll explain that a little bit more when I get to the fight. Alright, not the greatest attack to get on this guy. And I actually... Alright. Getting a 2 cycle on this guy isn't too bad. It's possible to get a 1 cycle, but you need a specific attack for it. So just... Make sure you're not actually inside of the head, because if you are, you're missing with some of your shots, and you can't hit him with a teapot cannon. Make sure you're in front of the head. So uh, for this enemy over here, you want to try and shoot him closer to the uh, this thing, so that the shot will also destroy the goo black stuff there. I don't know what to call it. I think the game calls it ruin. You can you can make the jump up to that platform, but it's generally it's pretty hard to do, and it saves like a second versus just landing on the platform. So in this fight I'm going to try and take some damage. Because I still need to get to low enough health to use Hysteria. Hmm. He stopped his attack, that's really unfortunate. Alright. And, um, his attack kind of got eaten there. That happens. Oh, god. This is not good. This is not exactly how I want this fight to play out. But you can, you can see I'm able to shoot the teapot cannon a lot faster again, because I'm switching away to the uh, pepper grinder and then switching back. And if you shoot these guys um, after they show their faces with the teapot cannon, it's a one shot. If I shot a little bit too early, so I have to take him down with the pepper grinder. Which is fine. Um, so you want to be careful not to kill the the iPod right away, because you kind of need him. Is he's the one that I'm going to be taking damage from? This is how I you want to set up your health to get into hysteria. 
All right, that's good enough. All right. So when you go into hysteria, you want to try and uh, just use the knife as soon as you do. Uh, by the way, when when uh, those guys are doing their animation to uh, pull out the like fireball things, they're invulnerable. You can't you can't damage them at all. So it's a waste of time to try and shoot them, even with hysteria. Alright, that's also the first time we've I've used hysteria in the run, so I should probably talk a little bit more about it. Um, so the way his, what hysteria does is, when you're at very low health, you can activate it. It gives you that shockwave in the slow-mo, which ideally you'd want to avoid because of the slow-mo. Um, and it makes you invincible. It increases your damage significantly. And it also makes all of your uh, ranged weapons, so the teapot cannon and then the pepper grinder, uh, not try not overheat at all. So you can stand them indefinitely. So because you can also cancel out the animation on the teapot cannon to shoot it much faster, when you're in hysteria, you do absolutely ridiculous damage. Like, much, much higher damage than would ever be intended. Uh, unfortunately, the route only really abuses it once, possibly twice, depending on your routing, um, because it just takes much too long to get to low health. Usually it's not worth it. So I, that is the first of possibly two uses of Hysteria in the run. Uh, so you need to kill those two Insidious Ruin so that the uh, vents there spawn and nothing else matters. Slithering ru Ruins never matter in any fight in the speedrun. I think there's one fight that you have to kill them casually. But it's uh, completely skipped in the speedrun. So this invisible platform is actually really convenient. It's basically exactly uh, three twirls and a dash away from that wall, or that ledge. So it's very convenient to just jump over. And that's the end of the Veil of Doom. So coming up here is the Mysterious East. Um, So this right here is a kind of difficult jump. You want to make it over, all the way over to there. Uh, which definitely requires a glitch jump. And if you die, you spawn back at the beginning of the area, so it's not ideal. Um, this jump is a little bit annoying. Um, otherwise... If you're not feeling super confident in that jump, this jump is a little bit easier, and then you can jump from here over to here. But uh, the uh, the actual jump is isn't too bad. Alright, so there are two routes for this area. I guess I'll show the more direct route first, because it's the one on top of this thing. You want to jump on top of this, aim in this direction, um, and align it up the way I do. And then it's three jumps, a glitch jump, and a dash. 
to land there, and then you can jump up to here. Otherwise, if you're not confident in that, it's not too bad. Just kind of follow the teeth. The teeth are on some, always on something you can land on there. So you can just follow them and then jump over. It loses maybe a couple seconds. Not a huge deal at all. And then you want to switch to the teapot cannon here. Be careful about things that you can get caught on. This game is kind of weird about that. Like that. So for the samurai wasps, you want them to start their attack animation before you shoot. And then you can drop a clockwork bomb over there to distract one of the wasps that are about to spawn. And then stand underneath the spawn of the other one. And then if you hit it right as it lands, uh, it won't be able to, to dodge it. And then the clockwork bomb can daze the other one, which lets you shoot it immediately. And the place I aim for here is basically in the middle of these flowers. If you shoot in the middle of those flowers, it'll hit the wall you need to hit, and you can just jump down. Alright, so there's a skip here. It's not too difficult, but it does require a glitch jump, and you kind of have to jump around an invisible wall. Hold on, let me just kill these guys to make it a little easier to show off. So you need to jump around this uh, this wall right here. Uh, yeah. Oh, there's more spawns. I didn't actually realize that. I haven't done this area normally in a long time. Um, yeah, you want to jump around that wall. But, uh, here's what the skip is going to look like. You jump around, one, two, three, glitch jump, and then land here. And then from here, you can kind of jump inside of this wall. And then it's just straight forward. And you, you can see that little, like, vapor thing. You want to aim a little bit to the right of that. Uh, and then jump out, and th three uh, twirls and a dash will spawn you over here. It's not too difficult, you just have to get used to it. And then from here, um, my strat is basically to go into that, um, they did all my jumps, that's a thing that can happen, um, but my strat is to go into this vent here and then I can either land on this one depending on where it is or if I'm I feel uncomfortable about that I can land on this one and then either way I can jump from here over to here and now here's the first scroll not super exciting so but um for the most part, the strat in the scroll is to hold right. I'm going to slow down in the first area to show some timing. But when normally you would do this kind of blind, but when you fall off of that cliff, one twirl will land you on the spring. That works out pretty well. But basically, you just want to hold right as much as possible. Um, I will mention it if there's any specific, anything like specific in terms of strats. Um, there's this jump, which is a bit annoying. Like there I died to it, but if you can time the jump right, you can avoid dying to that fireball. And it looks something like that, basically. It's pretty precise in terms of the timing and it takes some practice and then here you want to float all the way out and then jump uh, jump up to that ledge and there you don't want you don't want to land on the tree because that means you have to jump again and jumping in the scrolls loses momentum and ideally 
it is possible to make it up to that ledge without ever landing on the thing below me. Uh, but it is very difficult. Now back to holding right. Excuse me. And you don't want to land on this cloud because it's always moving back um, when you get to that cycle, which means uh, if you land on the cloud, you lose speed. And you, you, uh, these cycles actually start like as they come onto screen, so you can always jump exactly the same way there. No matter how fast uh, you went earlier. All right, and you want to kind of mash X before you get to that to. Uh, Try and get in there as quickly as possible. So this area is all about skipping triggers. I w you want to skip the triggers uh, by going around to the left here. You skip the trigger that makes these scrolls move. And then by jumping around this thing to the left, you skip the trigger for the samurai wasp cutscene. Or not the samurai wasp, the archer wasp cutscene. And then... Oof, that was close. From, from that uh, platform you can just jump across and land on the second scroll. Alright, so... This area is one of the worst in the game in terms of lag. So be very careful on this jump. It also requires a glitch jump, which is a giant pain. But I'm like, it's not too terrible. Uh, I don't actually remember what the normal strat for this area is if you don't do that skip, so. Looks like you have to go down there and do some stuff. Would be my guess. So it's definitely worth going for this jump. Alright, so there's a cutscene coming up here. I'm going to actually shoot this um, Samurai Ink Wasp, I think is what it's called, spawner before I go into the cutscene. Yeah, Samurai Ink Wasp. And then hit that one, hit that one. And then you want to jump up here and wait for the cutscene and just mash the cutscene skip. And there are two strats in this area. You can either you can do the fight as normal, which is totally fine. Uh, I will show that in just a second. Actually, I'm just going to show that because it's much, much easier than the other strat and only loses about two seconds. So what you do if you're going to do the fight normally is you shoot that, shoot this guy, uh, jump right across. And then, right as this guy spawns, you shoot him. And then you get to take this uh, spring up to here. The other possible strat is by jumping on top of the Samurai Ink Wasp. You can jump straight up to the top there. But it is kind of difficult, and if you screw it up, it generally means you're going to have to do the fight normally, because there's just too much in the way to do that skip again. So here's another slide section where I'm going to take advantage of edge jumps to try and maintain my speed as much as possible. Alright, so there is a pseudo skip here. You can...
get an edge jump off of that curve, land up here. And skip having to hit that switch behind me. And the cutscene over there. So now, don't go through the front there because it's kind of slow. You can just three jumps and then a dash gets you there just fine. And then here, there's a skip here for this fight. Oh, that's bad. Um, shoot that thing, and then I'm gonna do this just to keep those from spawning constantly. And then it's just three jumps, three jumps, and a glitch jump gets you up to here. And it's definitely worth doing because that fight down, mm, that fight down there is very long. But the reason that you kill the Samurai Ink Wasp is just to give yourself some, some uh, breathing room. You can go ahead and pull that chain. And then jump down. And again, in general, in areas where there's, um, the teeth, it's usually pretty safe to just jump there and assume that there's going to be something there. Sometimes there isn't, but... Like, if you know there's an Im invisible platform in that area, anywhere where there's teeth is usually pretty safe. Um... So for this fight coming up here, if you position yourself right, it is possible to kill all three of these wasps in one shot. The positioning is very precise though, and it is also still kind of luck based. So I will try to set it up, but... Ugh. That was not too terrible of a fight. So again, we're going to skip the music puzzle. Alright, um... So normally there's a fight in this area. I'm going to show the skip for the fight, and then I'll go back and trigger the fight and show what it would look like normally. So, um... Normally you would do this skip just after triggering the fight, but just to demonstrate, I'm going to avoid triggering the fight by shrinking into this wall, basically. And walking around the trigger for the fight. And now nothing will spawn. But yeah, normally there would be things here. Um, so this... We, what the skip looks like is you stand on top of this Samurai Ink Wasp. You kind of jump into that corner and be careful to kind of hold left a little bit. Otherwise you'll fall off like that and then you want to land here and then you can shrink in between here to get through. And now the way the actual fight looks um, it's going to be something like this. Kind of. You're going to kind of put off the Daimyo's wasp for a while to try and deal with uh, all of the spawners. Alright, and then that's the fight. Not too bad if you have to do the fight, it doesn't lose too much time. Um, but if you can do the skip, it is worth doing. And 
and then go ahead and take this spring up. And a few more edge jumps in this area, just to skip very small sections. You skip part of the slide here. And here, you can edge jump off of this to skip another section of slide. And then edge jump off of the end of the slide, ideally, to land onto this section. You can make it without the edge jump, obviously, but it's much easier if you just get the edge jump. So if you wait long enough on that second uh, Insidious Ruin, you can get it to be close enough to that switch to destroy the Ruin on the switch with the same shot that kills the Insidious Ruin. Alright, so there just as soon as you hit the chain, you want to start jumping over to the side to land on this. And then you can stand on it for a couple seconds to let it get all the way to the top. Now, I, I have more teeth than I normally would in this section, so I'm... I, I can upgrade my teapot, but I'm not going to just yet because I normally wouldn't have this this much. So that... That jump is a lot harder than it looks. It's very tight in terms of the timing. Um, like there, I was just very slightly too early on those jumps. Um, but and there, I held the flow too long. Um, but this jump saves. A pretty significant amount of time if you can land it. If you can't, that's not a huge deal. Just go ahead and uh, kill these. Uh, the drifting ruins, they're the only ones that matter. Uh, and you actually, the third one does not spawn until you go and land on this invisible platform. And then from there you can just jump straight across to this and it's pretty easy. And then you want to go ahead and hit this chain. And jump around that wall. Be careful, the, the hitbox is larger than the wall, so you want to jump around to the right just a little bit. And then uh, there's a cool strat here um, that you can do where Okay, that wasn't exactly it. You jump on top of this, and then you can kind of drop your clocker bomb from there and have it land on the switch. If you have troubles with that, just go ahead and shoot this like normal and drop the clockwork bomb. It saves, that strat saves all of like maybe a second and a half. So in this area, only the first Samurai Wasp actually matters for opening the door. The second one does nothing. And I'm not sure why. It just does. So once you kill that first one, you can just go straight in. You don't. You can ignore the second one. That's good RNG that the Menacing Ruin decided to throw fireballs right away. And now, now that I have the teapot, I mainly want to deal with uh, Menacing Ruin from range. Uh, ideally, like even if it means using the Pepper Grinder. So it is entirely possible to get hit 
by the enemies coming out of this cutscene. If you just kind of are bat unlucky. But if you do, it's not too big of a deal. And you can actually make it up to this um, bend if you get very, very good jumps. If you don't, it's not a huge deal. You can just jump into this and, and then go over to this one. It's a difference of maybe two seconds. And then shoot above that door. And you can jump over to the right here to shoot this enemy right as he spawns. And then the blue one is behind you. And coming out of this cutscene, you just want to mash uh, the boost or dash button. And skip as many platforms as you can. So there's some minor skips in this area. Like you can jump on top of this lion's head and then from here you can make it all the way out to here. Uh, go ahead and pull the chain. So for this fight, I want to get over to here as fast as possible so that you can hit this guy as he spawns, which I screwed up because the game uh, switched me off of the teapot cannon, which is a thing that can happen. Uh, if you zoom in, the game sometimes just switches you to the pepper grinder. I'm not sure why. And be careful about that fire, depending on the cycle, it can kill you very easily. Alright, so there's a skip here. It saves a pretty decent amount of time because it skips everything in this area. Like, everything that you have to do. Um, what you want to do is... Oops. With three good jumps and then a glitch jump, you can get on top of this lion's head. And then... Two good jumps and a flat uh, twirl will land you on this one. And then three good twirls and a dash lands you at the end. And just to be careful about cycles, I usually land on the lion's head because it makes you a little bit safer. And then right into the next scroll. And again, the strat is basically to hold right for most of the time. Um, there are some cycles coming up where you'll have to not hold right, but it's pretty minor. So hold right all the way through here. And then after this guy shoots, stop for a second. I stopped a little bit too late. Uh, and now the cycles are really off. Um, that's super awkward. Hmm. These cycles are super wrong, and I'm gonna restart the area to fix them. Uh... You can get through it with the wrong cycles, but I just wanted to show off the correct cycle. Um, so... I'm gonna restart the area. Like, I was hoping to try and wait until it got onto the right cycle, but... The cycles in this area are super weird. And there I started walking forward too fast. This is annoying. Um, this should be pretty simple. You just stop after the first arrow and then uh, start walking again after the second arrow. 
The invaders corrupted the vivid world. The assaulted could not comprehend the massless brutality. Still, they stayed on, trying to defeat their oppressors and recover their past. The cruel interlopers attacked. Yeah, like that. So once, once you the second arrow goes past you, you can just start holding forward again. And if you're just aggressive, these cycles work out pretty well in that area. You do have to kind of wait for the fire. The cycles in this area are kind of dangerous. If you end up on the wrong cycle, you can very easily get killed. But that's how it should look most of the time. And you want to follow this rock by jumping, just to maintain your momentum a little bit better. And hopefully you can land on top of the rock, which is ideal. Try and do that there, it's kind of annoying, but it's just, you don't want to float in that area, because floating is really slow. And here there's a minor skip in this area. So after this second building, you can kind of just walk off the edge and then do three jumps to hit that fire, like the building that's on fire, and it skips you ahead to this building. And the cycles happen to work out pretty well here, usually. Was I a little bit faster than normal? I'm not really sure, honestly. So now I need to wait for the cycle. Usually the cycles work out pretty well where you can just kind of hold right and jump onto that building as soon as you possible, and the arrow will have already despawned. The cycles in that um in that scroll are a little bit weird. So he depending on what skips you do, this is gonna be one of the areas where you're likely to have an upgrade for your teapot. So one thing to note is if you are playing on controller, because you have never gotten the hobby horse, it won't let you go all the like menu all the way over to the teapot cannon with the with the controller. So you have to do you have to do it with keyboard and mouse. And then you can level that up. Wait for him to start his first attack. And he did a bad attack, so it's fine to just hit him. Alright, there we go. Alright, that was really poorly played by me. Alright, this guy is doing this attack. I'm gonna go ahead and... So there's another very easy skip in this area that skips this entire puzzle. Um, highly recommend everyone does it. The skip is one of the easier skips in the run, I would say. I would say the only skip easier than it would be probably Crockery Skip, where you just kind of shrink into a wall and then that's it. But now you, you just go forward until you can't dash forward anymore, and then three jumps and a dash, and that's the skip. You skip that entire puzzle, and now you're in this area. This is another area where the cycles can be kind of weird based on the timing of when you get here. They let their spawn feed on our 
And there's going to be two wasps that spawn here, so you want to hit one as it spawns. And hit the other one as it starts to attack you. And then here, just take care of the ink wasps as fast as possible and wait for one of the samurais to spawn. The samurai wasps are much more threatening than the colossal ruins, so I generally recommend dealing with them first. great RNG on his attacks. Like this this attack is pretty slow because you have to wait for him to shoot all three and you can only hit two heads. Alright, there we go. Uh, so you have control in this cutscene, so you want to try and get through the door, but it's very difficult to do because you're completely blind. Like there, I missed it by a little bit. Um, ideally, you can get to about here during the cutscene. I've done it twice. It's very difficult. And then you can, you want to shoot this wall because it'll break. Oh, normally it would break the thing on the other side, but it, I guess it didn't there. And then, depending on how confident you feel in your jumps, you can either jump onto that, or if you're not quite as confident in getting that much height, you can jump around it into that vent. And then you want to land on this. And Jump around here. Be careful, the camera will screw you, so do you want to move the camera just... Even if you move it at all, it'll stop it from scrolling. And, then, and on that platform, and land here. So this fight is another area where you might hit enough teeth to upgrade your teapot, which is uh, 525 by the way. You need 525 teeth to upgrade your teapot. The first time, and the second time is 600. So if you hit enough teeth to get it there, then make sure to remember to get the upgrade. It makes that fight a lot faster. A restless seeker on private business arrived in the misery infested land. She, despite ignorance, uncertainty, and unhappiness in her own life, could not endure to see And this is another one where it's basically just kind of do what I do for the most part. There isn't a ton to explain. Uh, there's a cutscene after you push that boulder, so try and skip it as fast as possible. And don't hold right all the way down that hole because you'll hit that wall and slow down. And also don't hold right off of this spring because you'll hit the spikes. Here is one pseudo skip. If you do three decent twirls off of this jump, you don't have to go down there and hit that chain. And for this one, basically as soon as you're past halfway, you can unshrink. Yeah, there's just not a ton to say about the scrolls. Don't take that spring, it's 
much faster to just jump onto the cloud. And then um, off of this spring you want to hold left to avoid that cloud. And then you can land on it. And here. If you can get the glitch jump, you can land on this head. If you don't, it's not a huge deal. Uh, the cloud happens to be on a cycle where after you die, you can just land on the cloud and then you can jump from the cloud to the head and jump down here. It's not... it doesn't matter too much if you miss it. You only lose a couple seconds. And then on these, you just stay to, stay to one side to avoid getting hit. That's basically the end of the scroll, and the end, basically the end of the chapter, too. Because uh, all you got to do now is get up to the top of the temple and uh, hit the caterpillar cutscene. Be careful not to shrink on this path. The way you deal with that is by doing jump dashes instead. Because if you shrink there, you can get stuck. So uh, that's it for chapter three. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to go ahead and ask. Either you can shoot me a message on Twitch at uh, twitch.tv slash kinkycadence or leave it in the comment section down below and I will answer them uh, whenever possible. So that is going to be it for now. I will come back with the chapter 4 tutorial soon. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.